what's up? I'm Rachel Starr. Um, schizophrenic, all that jazz. Anyway, so one thing I want to talk about today, institutionalization. Institutional, being institutionalized um, as far as pretty much being put in a uh, mental health facility. Obviously, it's a hot-button subject. I myself have never been institutionalized. Um, I was almost institutionalized and um, I was 17 years old. 17, 18 years old. Maybe, maybe I, I turned 18 for this to even have happened. Yeah, I must have already been 18. Um, I was at, I've talked about it, some, the, the weird Christian, not college, but like between high school, between college place I went to. Um, at one point, um, they did the exorcism, demon possessed, all that jazz there, but they, they were like, we, we don't know what to do. We need to put her in a mental health. And they literally, I'm not kidding you guys. They, this is out in the middle of Texas, by the way. My parents are back in South Carolina. Um, they got someone to drive me to this mental health facility and they just kind of dropped me off and, and left me there. <laughs> you know, and I was like, I was scared out of my mind. I was terrified and I didn't know what was going to happen to me and they didn't take me. Um, because, spoiler alert, I didn't have insurance and they were like, I don't know why this girl has dropped off on our, you know, porch step here, but she don't have any money, kiddo, so, and this was before I had like, you know, a credit card even or anything, because this was just a while, a while ago. Um, it was just like, it was crazy. I was just dropped off there and left. Um, I had to call call the, the school type place that had dropped me off and I like called and finally got someone to come and pick me up. Like I had to beg and beg. I'm like, oh my god, I don't, like I'm in tears. Like these people won't take me. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know what to do. I don't know who to call. You know, and by the way, everyone thinks I'm demon possessed. I'm crazy and my schizophrenia was going insane and I was very unmedicated and it was all really, really bad and horrifying. Um, so that was one of the times, which I didn't because I didn't have insurance to pay for this. <laughs> Um, the next time later came when I was incredibly suicidal and I actually took myself to the hospital and I was just scared of, and I was in the hospital for a long time, not a long time, sorry, like what we're not, like a long time, was hours. Um, and I remember I was put in this room and it, nothing was in the room but me and they kept checking on me and eventually, um, talked to my parents and well, they got me and that kind of thing. So I wasn't institutionalized that time either. Um, and that was... God, I don't know, like probably 20, 1920. Still in a real, I don't even know if we knew I had schizophrenia yet, like at that point. But moving on. So institutionalization, it is a really, really scary thing. Um, it's obviously something that no one's like, yeah, I don't hook me up with that, right? No one is excited about it. It's really scary. Um, it's like, yeah, you're put in these rooms and depending on how nice the facility is. But here's the bottom line. If you need it, that's okay. Alright? Like, it, it's help. It is, it is just another tool to help you. And it's not for forever. It could be for a while. It could be for a few days, a month, a week, maybe a year or two, or more. But it's a tool to help you. I was talking to someone and they had a family member with a mental disorder, you know, and they were telling me how violent he was. My voice just squeaked. And I was just like, okay, okay. Uh, then this person had kids. And I'm like, I get that you want to help this family member, but if he is being violent and you have children in the house, not even to mention you, but you have children in the house, he needs to be institutionalized. Because obviously whatever you're doing to help isn't working anymore. And she was very offended that I said this. Just absolutely offended that I would suggest that they institutionalize this family member. Like, how, how could I be so heartless, me being a schizophrenic? And I said, it, but it, it's past that. Because now, if he hurts the children, or you, or somebody else, I don't know how many people are living up in this house, okay? <laughs> um, that, that's really intense. And I feel like that if, if I found out when I was psychotic that I hurt someone, God, I... I don't know. <sighs> I mean, I've, I've gone psychotic and I, I, I mean, there's a reason they have, you know, insanity as a defense. It's, it's scary. It's really scary. And I don't, I don't know what I would do if I found out during a psychotic episode, I hurt somebody, but especially a child. Like that is, that is scary. And I, I would, I'm not trying to talk to this, this very nice lady, but who obviously cares about her family member, but still it wasn't getting through that. No, institutionalizing them isn't giving up on the person. 
okay? It's not. You're not just shipping them away to get rid of them, all right? This is, yeah, this is a last ditch effort for help. And, and it's so funny because you see people with like drug problems, you know, and yeah, they may have to go to rehab. All right, and it's funny because I think as a society, we look on rehab better than, you know, a mental hospital. Like, it's just like, no, if someone has to go to rehab, you're like, wow, you must really have a problem, and that's awesome that you're taking the steps to get better. Whereas a mental health problem is like, whoa, this person's crazy, lock them up in prison, <laughs> idiot. You know, and we look down on this side when, you guys, it's just getting help. Now, do I think, yeah, there are some bad, obviously, throughout the ages, like, we've had mental health problems for, for ages, um, there have been some horrible hospitals, horrible institutions that have done bad things, okay? I get that. The great thing is that nowadays, it's not as common. Does it still happen? Absolutely. Okay? Lots of bad stuff happens everywhere. But this is a tool, okay, to help you get better. And... If whatever's working, I mean, if whatever is going on right now, whatever you're doing, if it's not working, then yes, you may need to go to a mental hospital. And by the way, one thing I think people get really scared of, and they don't even look into it, is everyone thinks like, if I go there, they're going to lock me up forever. Okay, first of all, back to my story, money. <laughs> it's like, so here's the thing about locking you up forever. It costs money. All right, and unless you just rich want to go to the middle they don't want to lock you up forever um a lot of them have day programs some have programs where you just go like a few days a week all right somewhere you just stay you know for like a week for treatment and they kind of help to decide where you're at all right so don't be afraid to look into these things they're not bad okay a lot of them also have like outpatient treatments okay or can hook you up with group homes all right or even you know support groups so please don't think of institutionalizing, don't think of mental health hospitals as this big, hor horrible, scary thing. To my family members and friends out there, first of all, if there's children in the house, the children come first, period, end of story, protect the children. Don't know why I have to stress that, but apparently <laughs> a lot of people just don't think. So protect the children, all right? Protect yourself, because you can't help your family member, friend, whatever, who has a mental health disorder, if you're getting abused, that's, that's not acceptable in any way. But I forgot where I was going with that point. I'm sure it was important. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know. But well, my friends and family, there we go. Let's track. Um, you can't help them if you're not in the place to help them. Like, you, you can't. And it's honestly, it's an unfair burden, all right, for you to take... To, and, and, and I do mean this, and it's hard even for me to say. I feel like I'm an unfair burden on my parents. I'm 31. I'm, I'm living at home because it gets weird when I live alone. I get really suicidal, and I get kind of crazy. And I, 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 wish, I wish that wasn't the way it was. I don't know if it'll always be like that. Right now it is. You know, I, I, I had an emotional talk with my mom today where I called myself a failure, and she just went off like, Rachel, you're not a failure. How are you a failure? And I'm like, sweetie, look around. <laughs> I was like, like, no, really, like, do I, do I have to explain it? Like, it, 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 but she was like, Rachel, how are you a failure? You know, you, you, she just started saying all this other stuff. You know, you're not in debt. You know, so many kids, like, are always asking, you know, their parents for money. All of her friends, you know, are having to, get, like, loan their children money and knowing they're never going to get it back. And you never ask for money. I'm like, no, I asked for a place to stay. <laughs> um, you know, when you're talking about drugs and all these different things. And she goes, Rachel, you, I've never thought of you as a failure. And that really, that, that helped me. I still feel like a failure, but it really helped me. And I know there's family members out there who are just going so many extra miles, all right, to help other family members with mental disorders. And that's awesome. And that's great. And even if that person can't express to you how much it means to them, understand that's awesome. But you can't do everything, okay? You can't. And at some point, you have to decide on getting them the help that they need. Now, 
that could be. Like I said, it could be a treatment program with a counselor where you just go for a few hours every week. Or it could be a situation where, yes, that person needs to be taken out of the home and watched in a facility for a few months and then maybe put in a group home where they're still watched but have more freedom. Maybe go to a recovery center, all right, where you're putting your own apartment on the center, help got, get in a, they help you get a job, different things like that. Like Rose Hill is one of them, okay? So don't be afraid to look into options like that. All right, with institutionalization, it's not all or nothing, okay? It's tools to help you live a kick-ass life, and you deserve that, okay? You do. And the question comes, you know, would I go to a mental health facility? Ab absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if, if I can't and take care of myself or I'm a danger to other people, absolutely that's on the table. I've told my parents, okay, I saved up the $10,000 that I had to, originally my insurance has changed now, but originally for my insurance I had to have $10,000 um, to pay towards one year of being in a mental health facility and the insurance would take over after that. And I saved that up and, and I put my mom on the account. So I was like, look, when you have to make that decision, you're good to go. You got a whole year and hopefully after that year, who knows what will happen then, but you got a year that you can put me in a mental institution to get the help that I need. It is a um, very real possibility and we've talked about it, and I've told them, look, if, it, if that's what it comes down to, please put me in a mental health facility. Do your research, you know, let's not get the bargain brand. But, <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> you know. But no, seriously, do what you need to do to take care of them, because I love my parents, and I think all of us mental disorders, like, we care about our families too. Even if, you know, you may not be in the mental place to really vocalize that. It's just a tool. Uh, lots of different um, topics I've hit on before. Mental health playlist popping up. Definitely check out some of my other videos. Um, check out my book, Little Broken Star. It is a very easy to read, um, ideally for kids. Kids with schizophrenia, um, hallucinations, depressions, delusions, that kind of stuff, how to cope and deal with them. Um, but also great for adults. Um, it's really cool in here. We like, you, you draw what your monsters look like and then you kind of get used to them. And it's just a really cool, you learn to take control. So my book, Little Broken Star on Amazon, link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Rachel Starr.